1.7 trillion dollars. That's the total amount of outstanding student debt in the United States. It continues to grow with no end in sight. If you break that number down, you see that about 43 million Americans hold an average of $37,000 in student debt. Now, $37,000 doesn't seem excessive, especially if it can be paid over time and if that's the price for obtaining the education necessary for climbing our social economic ladder. But $37,000 is an average, and averages hide disparities. They hide terrible examples of crippling debt. And the stories are out there, like a dentist that owes about a million dollars. And then there are other less extreme, but just as outrageous cases, like a, school, like, like a school teacher with a very modest salary holding about $81,000 in debt. Averages hide the nefarious conduct of certain players in the student loan industry. Take the servicing companies like Navient or Sally Mae, who have been sued on multiple occasions for outright deceiving borrowers into problematic payment plans that ultimately make students pay more over time, thereby making it much more difficult to pay off debt. Averages also hide deeper economic problems, like the fact that even before the pandemic assistance, about 5.5 million people were in default and that another 3 million were in forbearance, not making any payments. Averages hide other social problems, like the fact that many people with student debt, particularly millennials, have been unable to achieve certain life milestones, like buying a home and starting a family. It's for all these reasons that student debt has become one of the most salient topics of our time. In 2004, student debt was at only $250 billion, a formidable number, but nothing compared to the 1.7 that it stands at right now. Why did this happen? How did it get so bad? The simple answer is that more people are going to college. But that's an incomplete answer. It doesn't really tell us anything. In my upcoming book, The Trillion Dollar Question, Understanding the Rise of Student Debt, I break down why. I synthesize volumes of research and get down to the core of it. I take you on a tour of five different industries to answer this important question. I start with a very simple question, the most obvious one. Why has tuition increased so much? We've all heard stories of people from older generations who paid a fraction of the cost of what people pay now. In 1980, if you went to a public school, you paid around $1,800 in tuition. Now, that cost is about $10,000. If you went to a private school, that was much more expensive in 1980. You paid around $10,000. But now, it has ballooned to about $34,000. Um, it's estimated that college tuition has increased 1,300% since 1980, more than any other item on the consumer price index. But to be fair, we can't place the blame entirely on colleges. In addition to considering what universities have done, we also have to factor in what state governments throughout the United States have not been doing. And what they haven't been doing is supporting education as much as they used to. Over time, state governments began divesting from higher education. So as tuition has increased and state governments have divested, students, along with their families, have been forced to take on debt to meet the cost. At the same time, we can't ignore the tremendous impact of for-profit colleges on our big question. The tragedy of these schools, and I don't speak negatively of all of them, is that their education is poor. Some would say it's terrible. On top of that, the job prospects are just as bad. There are some cases of some students that actually remove their for-profit colleges from their resumes in order to improve their chances of finding a job. The worst part is that on average, these schools cost much more, which means that if you attend here, you'll take on more debt. Even if we understand why tuition has increased, our question isn't fully answered. We have to keep going. Now we have to ask the next obvious, but just as important question. Why do so many jobs require college degrees? After all, that's why people attend college. People attend college for a number of reasons. To become smarter, to establish a lifelong network, or because there's nothing to do. But most of us attend college because we need to work. And most secure jobs require college degrees. Yet decades ago, most people didn't need degrees. So the question I now have is, has work become all the more complicated? Do we now need more skills to operate our economy and to produce the things we need in everyday life? Or are employers arbitrarily raising the standard? 
Back in X year, employers complained about a skills gap. It's the notion that employees in mass didn't have the necessary skills to work at certain jobs. And because of this, most jobs went unfulfilled. But how true is this? In many respects, yes. Automation has certainly eliminated many jobs that humans would normally do. It's the reason why many middle skilled jobs have been disappearing. But at the same time, you'll learn that much work hasn't gotten that much more complicated. In other words, a college degree would not be necessary, a high school diploma would suffice. In this case, you'll see that employers have been arbitrarily raising standards, requiring more degrees or experience. During weak economies with high unemployment, employers naturally take the opportunity to get the best workers. The dynamic here, though, is that whether a job requires a degree or more experience shifts with the economy. The work hasn't gotten that much more complicated. We've all heard of the meme about an entry-level job requiring something crazy like 10 years of experience. If I don't have the job, how do I get the experience? But if I don't have the experience, how do I get the damn job? Now, this meme perfectly captures the way employers have offloaded the responsibility of training its employees onto universities. Decades ago, employers would spend much more time and resources training its employees. That has changed for the most part. So when it comes to our initial trillion dollar question, one obvious explanation is that students who eventually become employees have had to take on more responsibility training themselves while in college. So let's go back to our formula. While tuition has increased and states have invested less, while jobs have required more, students have had practically no choice but to take on more debt. What has happened is that the cost of not going to college has become that much more costly. It's become extremely expensive. 